Hey guys, I'm Alastair from Trail and & Kale and today I'm reviewing the Nike Terra Kaiga 8. I'm super excited to be reviewing the Nike Terra Kaiga 8 and I wasn't really sure what to expect from this shoe because only last week I was reviewing the Nike Pegasus Trail 4. That shoe kind of didn't really live up to my expectations. Um, Pretty good road running shoe, um, pretty good door to trail shoe. Uh, works very well on light trails, but anything more technical than light trails, then I can't really call this a trail running shoe. So I think Nike did a really good job with the Nike Pegasus 36 trail. Um, that was their first Pegasus trail running shoe uh, from a few years ago. And essentially what they did was took the Pegasus and slapped on a bit of a more rugged outsole for trail running, running on trails. And because they kept the essence of the Pegasus, um, it was a really damn good shoe and they absolutely nailed it right out of the box with their first Pegasus trail. But since then that Pegasus line has been going downhill and it's getting a little bit better with the Pegasus Trail 4, but I'm not really here to talk about the Pegasus. I'm here to talk about the Nike Terra Kaiga 8 and basically how good a trail running shoe this is. This review, like all our outdoor gear reviews, is in no way sponsored. Um, sometimes brands will send us shoes for us to review or other outdoor products, um, but we don't take payment and sometimes we just go out and buy the product. Okay, so before I go on, please like this video um, and definitely consider subscribing to our channel if you enjoy outdoor gear reviews. And if you enjoy this one in particular, then we got loads more reviews like this. Also, definitely head over to our in-depth review of the Nike Terra Kaiga 8. I've got more photos of this shoe and more deeper insights onto how I've been getting on. And as I am choosing to use this shoe right now as my number one pick, a little bit of a spoiler there, um, I will be updating that review with durability um, updates and and just more findings as I run in this shoe more. So definitely go check out that review. Right, let's continue with this Nike Terra Kaiga 8 review then. So what's the sizing and fit like out of the box? Well, the shoe is kind of fits true to size. Now, I've uh, looked at reviews online at the Nike website as well. And although the shoe does generally fit true to size, there have been a lot of reports, including Helen, who have said the shoe is longer than previous versions of their Nike Terra Kaiga. Um, but the rest of the shoe fits well, so it's kind of curious. I'm not sure what's happened there with this. So I would recommend maybe dropping down half the size to get the length of the shoe fit you better. Um, I actually went with my usual size, and it does feel a little bit long there. Um, but to be honest, when I'm running downhill, I don't feel my feet sliding to the front or hitting the front of the shoe or anything like that. So maybe I'll try a size, half size down, uh, not sure. But for now, I've really been enjoying this and it fits pretty well in my usual size. But out the box, the fit is excellent. It's very comfortable and there's no real breaking in needed, to be honest. As you can see, there's actually quite a lot of flex in the shoe. Um, so it does work with your feet and all the materials are, are very soft. Plenty of padding going on. Um, so yeah, fits good out of the box. Let me go over some of the key features really quickly then. The shoe itself costs $140. I'll let you know later on in this video if it's worth $140. Now it weighs 10.4 ounces and that's for a size US 9. This shoe is actually a little bit heavier than the Nike Pegasus Trail 4. That's unusual because historically the Nike Terra Kaiga line has been the lightest shoe in the Nike Trail lineup. So interesting to see that it's slightly heavier. Um, it doesn't feel like a heavy shoe at all when you're running in it. So even though I'd like to see the shoe get lighter, it didn't really affect my running style or ability to run for long periods of time in the Nike Terra Kaiga 8. It has a pretty low stack height and a drop of four millimeters. So I really like this. I've always kind of said 
a low drop is better for you when you're running on trails especially. Uh, it just gives you a better kind of feel for the trails. You're more, you're in a more natural running stance having a low drop and especially with a low stack as well you can really feel the trail and use your biomechanics, your ankles and your feet because there's a lot of bones in your feet so it's really important to be able to have your style and stance as natural as possible when you're on the trails because there's a lot of stabilization that your joints um, and bones and muscles need to be doing so the more you can leave that to your actual biomechanics the better and I don't like these big soles on shoes because it takes a lot of that away from your natural biomechanics and what your feet should actually be doing so the Terakai Gear 8 does a really good job with the 4mm drop and the low stack and actually talking about the midsole this is the only Nike trail running shoe that has Nike Air Zoom in the midsole I absolutely love this Pegasus Trail 4 has Nike React midsole, entirely made of Nike React foam. And oh, it's not a good experience on technical trails, believe me. You really need to have that zoom foam because it gives you more response and doesn't compress when you're running over technical rocks and stuff. So when you're compressing too much, your foot's rolling all over the place, there's lateral roll going on and you're just losing control basically. So. Having this zoom sole, there is also React in there by the way, um, but having the zoom midsole is a godsend, I absolutely love it. And for that very reason, the Nike Terakai Gear is always going to be my favourite Nike trail running shoe because of that midsole and the, the control and the responsiveness that I get from it. The shoe is uh, medium width and there's actually plenty of room in the toe box. Um, for your feet to splay, so I really like that about a shoe. There's also a rock plate in here on the forefoot, so that basically stops any sharp rocks or anything on the trail that might be spiky from actually getting through the shoe, and uh, basically you won't feel any of that on the trail because you're protected by the rock plate. Moving on to the Nike Terra Kiger 8 performance review then, so what does it actually perform like on the trails? Let me start with what it's like on road surfaces. I've got to run to my trail about one kilometer before I get to the actual trails. And it's not the most cushioned shoe, it's a fairly minimal shoe. Um, not as good as the Pegasus Trail 4 when it comes to running on the roads, but I wouldn't expect it to be. This is a trail running shoe and I want it to be a high performer on the trails. I'd rather sacrifice a little bit of comfort on the road. And to be honest, it's not uncomfortable. The rock play and the zoom slash react midsole actually gives you plenty of cushioning to run a little bit on the road to get to your trails, so I wouldn't worry about that at all. What's the Terra Kiger 8 like on various types of trails then? So on anything rocky, uh, buff, you know, hard packed, dusty kind of trails, the shoe's absolutely amazing. I absolutely love it. This is now my favorite trail running shoe, and that takes a lot for a brand to come along and actually take that title. If you uh, follow this link up here, you will find my best trail running shoes buyer's guide. And of course, this is number one for the all round top performer right now. So definitely go check out that post. Uh, it will definitely help you find the right trail running shoes for you, depending on how you like to run, what kind of terrain you like to run, distances, all that kind of stuff. So definitely check out that post. So yes, it works very well on technical terrain. The tread is very sticky and there are aggressive lugs, so it really does grip into the trails very well. Now I haven't tried it in the wet yet or in muddy kind of trail conditions because it hasn't rained here in California for quite a while now. So. As soon as it does rain, I'll be sure to take these out and update my review on trailandkale.com. What's it like for steep uphill running then? As I said, the tread on the bottom is exceptionally sticky. The grip is amazing and the lugs are fairly aggressive on the front there as well. So as you can see, they're 
quite a bit of depth to the lugs and I find running uphill I can really kind of hook into the trail and uh, it sticks to the trail very well and I just find a uh, lower drop really helps as well when running up and downhill just gives you more control feels more natural uh, you will definitely feel like you're using your calves a lot more if you're not used to a lower drop so don't worry about that that's normal you should be using your calves so um, it will take a few runs to get used to but I promise you you're far less likely to pick up injuries from using a low drop shoe than one that say has a 9mm or 10mm drop, something like that. So I definitely recommend sticking with a low drop shoe if you can, um, just give it a try. If you have switched from a high drop to low drop shoe, definitely leave me a comment down below. I want to know your thoughts on how it helped your running and just generally how you got on with it. Now the shoe could be a little bit lighter and I would really appreciate that when running uphill. The less weight you've got on your feet, the less you're actually carrying up the hill and the less your muscles have to work. So from an endurance point of view, I would like this shoe to be a little bit lighter um, and then it really would be an unstoppable shoe. But uh, to be honest, like I said, it doesn't really feel that heavy. It's really not that bad. It's definitely an awesome shoe that's kind of worth the extra weight. What's the Terrakiger 8 like for running fast on steep downhills then? Well, my local trails have lots of rocks and roots sticking out um, and that's on my downhill routes as well. So this shoe performed really well. I love the low drop, um, puts me in a nice uh, running stance when going downhill. I've got plenty of control with the shoe. The sticky grip was fantastic. I haven't slipped over in this shoe once. Um, I just really don't have anything bad to say about it. I've been looking for a great shoe like this for so long that I'm just so happy the Terakai 8 has come along and it's filled the gap for me. And so far this shoe really has performed in every area. You can probably tell I'm very excited about it and I am. This shoe is a winner for me. So how does the Nike Terakai 8 compare to other shoes that I've been testing right now? Well, to be honest, it doesn't compare it completely blows away any other shoes I've been running in. I'm loving the Terrakiger 8. Definitely outperforms the Pegasus Trail 4. Um, it's just got a really great natural feel. I love the low drop. I love the zoom midsole. Nike, please do not get rid of zoom midsoles in trail running shoes. This is the last one in the Nike trail range that has the zoom and I would love it to stay. Please, please keep the zoom mitts on. With that said, the upper is really great as well. It's a really nice design, very breathable. You can probably see underneath this top layer that there's a nice soft internal layer as well and that kind of protects your feet from the, the upper. Uh, and it's very soft as well, so feel, feet generally feel really nice in this shoe. The tongue has a nice amount of padding. Uh, I love the laces. These do up and they stay done up, they don't undo when you're running. I just love the simple design of them as well. Finger loop at the back. It's great, you can easily get your finger in there. Toe cap at the front is solid so if you stub any rocks or roots your feet and your toes will be fine there. Um, I really like the lacing system at the top as well. They've actually fixed some issues here um, with how the shoe wraps around the front of your, your leg that goes into the shoe uh, with these bits here. Can you see? So there's a really secure fit in these shoes. They feel really great. And if you look inside, you've got this kind of cushion on the inside. Hopefully you can see that. So it doesn't go all the way up to the heel wall. It's just inside there. And that actually feels really comfortable on your feet. And it does lock your feet in the shoes. So I have a really nice fit in these shoes. 
Is the Nike Terra Kyger 8 worth buying then? Is it worth that $140 price tag? Yeah, of course it is. The only comparable shoe to this right now, I would say is probably the Salomon S Lab Sense 8. It's quite a similar shoe, same drop. This one's a little bit heavier. Um, same kind of durability on the outsole. I will say actually, because the rubber is very sticky, it's not the most durable. But to be honest, this is gonna last long enough, probably, who knows, 400, 500 miles. Um, but then you compare that to the Salomon S Lab Sense 8, which is $180, so that's $40 more than this shoe. Has a similar kind of durability issues. Um, I like to point out, Sticky rubber will wear down faster because it's doing a better job. It's actually sticking to the trail and keeping you where you put your foot, basically. So I know it kind of isn't as durable, but it's worth it to me. It's worth it that I get more enjoyable runs, more runs where I'm actually trusting my shoes and I can actually run like I want to run and not worry about my shoe not being able to keep me standing, which is very important. But the comfort and performance and control I'm getting out of this shoe is 100% worth it. When you compare it to other shoes out there at the moment, this is a clear winner for me. So yes, definitely try the Nike Terra Kyger 8 if you're an intermediate advanced trail runner, or just maybe even a beginner trail runner who wants to run more technical trails. You've definitely got to give this shoe a try. I promise you, you're going to enjoy it. Okay, I've already been talking far too long about this shoe. Definitely check out my in-depth review on trailandkill.com for more pictures and some more insights about this shoe. I hope you enjoyed watching it and enjoyed how excited I am about this shoe because I am training for Matterhorn Ultrax Ultramarathon in the Swiss Alps this summer. So I am just so happy that I have a shoe now that I can rely on and I don't have to worry about finding that shoe that's gonna get me around that course and get me around it fast, feeling good. So I'm so happy to have found this shoe. Um, I hope you enjoy watching the video. Please give it a like if you did. Share it with a friend if they're looking for a great trail running shoe right now. And consider subscribing to our channel. We've got lots more trail running shoe reviews on the way and plenty of outdoor gear reviews coming all the time. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.